metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. I've got such butter fingers I can't roll worth a hoot. My wings stiffen up, you see, before an earthquake. Let me try that throw again. I think that 14 tries is quite enough, stiff or not. <laughs> it's time that we all moved on. Carlin, can you really tell when an earthquake's on its way? Don't be ridiculous. Well, of course he can't. Earthquakes, as well as other natural disasters, are absolutely unpredictable. He's just trying to talk his way out of losing the game. Tell her, Carlin. Let's see. The last time my quake warning system acted up, I was on by myself in the desert. My wings got stiff and the world shook like mad. Awesome! That's some fairy tale. In science's name, I demand you tell me the <laughs> truth. <laughs> 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 Eh, the quake in the desert lasted a little bit longer. Oh, hello, beautiful. I got a double. Oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh. <sighs> ho, I'm really tired. It's still very dangerous to head back home. There could still be destructive aftershocks. My wings aren't stiff anymore. Take my word for it. There are no more earthquakes coming tonight. Can your wings also tell us when there's a windstorm on the way? As a matter of fact, my wings only alert me to impending earthquakes. When there's going to be a bad windstorm, my, uh, beak itches. Actually, I'm getting some indication that a bad windstorm is going to be happening several states over tomorrow around lunch. Conveniently, there isn't a way that we can prove or disprove that. Well, we could fly to where the storm is going to be and watch the thing. Unless you're, um, too scared to go, that is. Nonsense. I'm not scared because we won't find a storm. Oh, there'll be a storm, all right. Wanna bet? You're on. Uh -huh. Can someone finally tell me exactly where it is that I am to fly? We're flying to watch the windstorm that Carlin's itchy beak predicted. Watch the what? Windstorm. Carlin also successfully predicted yesterday's earthquake. Sweet sauerkraut! Why on earth didn't you warn me about this earlier? Windstorm flying is dangerous. We are turning this ship around. Don't worry, we will find no storm. He can't predict them. This will prove that Carlin is, as they say, full of it. See, there's nothing ahead but clear skies. But there was an earthquake when I said. Any kind of coincidence can happen. I can prove scientifically that earthquakes are an absolutely chaotic process, completely impossible to calculate or to predict. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe, our flyer, could it tolerate temperatures of around 4,000 degrees or so? I'll take that as a yes. School will start once we're deep enough. At the core of our cozy planet, there is a burning hot liquid substance called magma. Temperatures reach almost 4,000 degrees in the mantle adjacent to the Earth's molten core. I still don't understand why we have to dig so ridiculously deep down into the ground. Earthquakes happen way up at the surface, not this deep. Quite right, friend. But the reasons earthquakes happen are down here. First slide, please, dear colleague.
The planet's external solid layer, or crust, is only 40 kilometers thick. Compared with the rest of the mass of the planet, the crust is very thin. Forests, mountains, and oceans are all located atop this thin layer. The Earth crust is not all one big piece. It consists of separate parts, or plates, adjoining tightly at the edges. All the plates make up the planet's external layer. In general, it's all arranged rather insecurely. And this insecurity results in earthquakes. The burning liquid core moves all the time, and so do the parts of the upper layer floating on the surface. When neighboring sections creep up on each other or collide, the result can be an earthquake. Right, and since it's impossible to predict the movement of the planet's hot liquid core, then no one can make a credible prediction as to where an earthquake will happen. Looks like the ship's hull is starting to overheat. Head back to the surface. That's great. It would seem we don't have enough power left to dig our way back to the surface. Huh? <gasps> Are there holes in the surface, like caves or something, anywhere? Are there holes? <gasps> holes? That's brilliant! There are, and they're called volcanoes! Hooray! A volcano is a hollow formation on the Earth's crust, which gets its name from the ancient god of fire, Vulcan. In truth, volcanoes are holes connecting the Earth's burning hot core with the surface, in spots where pieces of crust, the plates, collide. So the Earth's crust is made up of different plates. And what's more, it's full of holes. The ship is dangerously overheated. We must find a way to cool her down, or we are all going to cook. OK, so now we understand earthquakes, but what about windstorms? Where do they come from? Winds and windstorms are the movement of air. Warm air is light, and it goes up like a balloon. Then cold air comes in to replace the warm air. There would be no wind at all if the Earth and the air above it had the same temperature. But that's impossible, because the sun warms the planet extremely unevenly. Warm during the day, cold at night. In summer, near the equator, the ocean water starts to evaporate, and the steam rises to join the hot air. At a certain height, the steam gets cool and turns into fog, making clouds but the air becomes even warmer and goes higher still. Meanwhile, new pockets of cold air flow into the place the hot air just rose above. The more pockets there are, the stronger the wind is. This is how giant windstorm funnels are made. Sweet sauerkraut! <gasps> if you're wondering, my beak is itchy as heck. There's... No link between your nose and the storm. Our vessel got overheated while we were deep inside the Earth. And as it got colder, it warmed up the air around it. We are the ones who created this scary windstorm? If this windstorm manages to make its way onto dry land, it will be very bad. We can control the storm, to some extent anyway, until our hull cools back down. Wherever the air gets hotter, that's where the storm will go. We need to lead it farther out to sea. All right, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Storm isn't following us any longer. I guess the ship cooled down. <laughs> I think that's all right. We managed to lead the darn thing far enough away from land. <laughs> <laughs> now we should fly the ship away from the windstorm. Uncontrolled storms like this are very dangerous. <sighs> we'll go higher and fly above it. <laughs> That's the very first artificial windstorm! It's phenomenal! It's beautiful, isn't it? Breathtaking! Well, since we're the parents of that swirling thing, wouldn't it be fitting if we gave our creation a name? There used to be a tradition that when it came to giving a storm a name, they'd name them after a woman. In addition, they were given names that appeared in strict alphabetical order. Luckily, I've gathered information about all the named storms from recent years. Just let me check out which letter comes next in the master list of storm names. Hmm, looks like the letter is R. <laughs> I'm having trouble coming up with an appropriate name. Can't find a single Roberta? one. Regina, Rebecca, Rosa, Romilda, Rovina, Renesme, Raylin, Rochelle, Rihanna, Ray, Roxy, Raven, Rimelda, Hyde, Riley, Hyden. Wunderbar! Rosa is perfect. Guess we should have thought of that in the first place. That is a dandy name for a storm! Thanks so much! Goodness! I'm flattered and honored! But of course, it's a shame my storm is an artificial one. All right, Moose. You have to admit that I predicted that windstorm. We made that storm. Your prediction had nothing to do with it. You can't prove that. My beak itched, a storm came, the end. So your beak is the chicken and the storm is the egg? Uh-oh, my feet is swelling. There's gonna be a tsunami tonight. <laughs>